Don't underestimate the power of the forces of Ghanaians when we say we will shut down those businesses. The West needs Ghana. Any American business operating in Ghana today is not doing so because of LGBTQ. They are doing so because they are making a profit. And they would not leave Ghana because of LGBTQ when they look at their profit margin. And if they choose to pack bag and baggage and leave, another company will come in and make that profit. Ghana is a profitable country to do business in. If they think they have the power to issue threats to anybody in Ghana, they should go ahead. It's within their legitimate right. But it also is within our legitimate right for me to lead a demonstration and shut down their businesses. It is, look, if they want to threaten us, we'll issue threats. And I'm issuing that on your platform. It will be fair. It will be quid pro quo. Hello. Now, about two weeks ago, the Ghana parliament passed a bill into law which allowed for the imprisonment of anyone involved in the act of homosexuality for up to five years in prison. This bill has since not yet been signed into law by the president, stating that it hasn't arrived in his office yet. The Human Rights Watch are asking the president to veto this piece of legislation. And also the International Monetary Fund are evaluating the economic implication of this piece of legislation. Ghana is also engaging with its uh, private external creditors to seek their support. Uh, looking ahead, steadfast policy and reform implementation will be needed to fully and durably restore macroeconomic stability and debt sustainability in Ghana. It will be crucial for the government to continue implementing the program as envisaged to ensure sustainable growth and, um, and policy uh, uh, implementation. Uh, with respect to um, the uh, specific piece of legislation, uh, our team is evaluating the potential economic and financial implication, implications of the legislation, and we will continue to monitor the situation closely. Um, as we have said before, um, like institutions, diverse and inclusive economies flourish. Now, some have come to translate this as the United States and some European nations are considering cancelling their businesses with Ghana. One of the members of parliament who had championed for the passage of this particular bill, Sam Nati George, had this kind of reaction to the Western nations, considering how often they have always sanctioned African leaders and African nations who have passed this kind of bills. Take a look. But when you decide to bring what is supposed to remain in the privacy of your bedroom into public space, then public policy will apply to you. We're dealing with getting enough beds for our women to give birth when, we, when they are pregnant. And we should now begin to divert those resources to stitch up the backsides of men who have chosen to go and have sex with men when they begin to have anal tears and anal wats. The people who lose their identity have lost their nation. Ghana is not the 51st state of the United States. Tell the American people, you either do business with us on our terms or you can walk. American businesses that operate in Ghana are not in Ghana because of LGBTQ. They are in Ghana because they make a profit. If you think that because we are protecting our cultural values and saying no to LGBTQ, you want to lose $100 million in profit, pack up and go. Africa must begin to assert our rights. We, we are not puppets and stooges of the West. And it's just the sheer hypocrisy of America and the West. Carter buys about a billion dollars of, of military hardware every year from America. The punishment for, for homosexuality in Qatar is death. In Nigeria, the punishment in your law for same-sex marriage is 14 years imprisonment. The maximum in Ghana's law is just three years. Has Nigeria's economy collapsed? The American economy would not run and the Western economies would not run without African raw material. Why should Ghanaian cocoa and Nigerian cocoa be traded on the New York Stock Exchange and not on the Ghanaian Stock Exchange? I mean, a bank should not be threatening the customer and saying, I won't give you a loan if you don't do what I want. If I don't come to you for a loan, you don't, you don't, you don't turn a profit. The CDC says that homosexuals are 400% more likely to be suicidal. The, the, the young man who walked into a school in the United States three months ago and shot up 22 kids was transgender. And this all came from a mental disorder because of him having undergone uh, a gender change or gender reassignment when he was eight years old. Even on the African continent, which country has the highest crime rate? South Africa. Why? Because they've embraced homosexuality as one of the growing factors in that country. 
So com companies like DSTV, for example, will have to be careful about the kind of movies that they show in Ghana. The kind of content you show on TV must be censored. You cannot be you cannot be a social media influencer and creating content that is that is contrary to the laws of the land. The punishment for advocacy is the strictest punishment in the bill. It's it's more it's, it's, the punishment for advocacy is higher than the punishment for the act itself. Because Mr. Speaker, like it is attributed to Robert Mugabe, if we put two men in a room and give them twelve years, a uh, twelve months to produce as an offspring, they cannot produce an offspring. And so, Mr. Speaker, we will continue to stand here. But let me use this opportunity, Mr. Speaker, to celebrate Mr. Speaker, who has been a stalwart and a bastion for this bill. But for Mr. Speaker, this, this bill would most likely have been killed. Mr. Speaker has stood his ground and ensured that this bill has come this far. And I want to use this opportunity with the support of my colleague members of Parliament, since we all support this bill to serve notice to the Western powers that we have taken judicial notice of what they have done to the Speaker of Uganda. After Uganda, after Uganda passed the bill, after Uganda passed the bill, the sanctions on the Speaker of Uganda's parliament and on the sponsors of those bills, we will serve notice as well that if they replicate the same with our Speaker and members of parliament, we will also take action against their business interest in our country. Because they, they serve in this country and make money from here and take back home. They cannot hold us to ransom. And like has been asked on this floor, Mr. Speaker, why is it, why is it that the American Secretary of State has not sanctioned the Secretary of Defense? Because June was declared Pride Month and they had transgender parades. The U.S. Secretary of Defense blocked and stopped a transgender parade on a U.S. Air Force base because he said the U.S. Pentagon, which is their defense headquarters, would not support such activity. Governor DeSantis has passed legislation against open transgender parades in Florida. Why have they not taken on their own citizens? In fact, in 2022 alone, there were 433 actions in state house of legislatures across the United States banning and clamping down on homosexuality. The Supreme Court of the United States, SCOTUS, just last week, passed a landmark judgment enforcing the rights of American citizens to refuse to offer services to people on the basis of their faith and because they were LGBTQ. Mr. Speaker, it shows you that even America has realized the error of their judgment and are walking back their steps. Italy, 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 Italy in June designated June also as Family Protection Month to counter the, 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 L, the Pride Month. Maybe that's something Ghana should begin to consider, that we made June a Family Values Month to celebrate the Ghanaian family value.